eating healthy fat, your brain runs on fat. It is made out of fat. If you do not eat egg yolks that are soft cooked, hard, hard boiled egg yolks are inflammatory. Scrambled eggs are inflammatory. Poached eggs, soft poached, are not inflammatory. This matters enough that I'm making a difference from it. Eat coconut oil, especially MCT oil, an extract of coconut oil that's six times more effective and reverses Alzheimer's disease. In fact, there's a podcast on my blog from a physician who cured her husband's early onset Alzheimer's using coconut oil. So coconut oil, butter, animal fat from healthy animals, you do that, your brain and your hormones will work better. Meditate, for sure, to upgrade your head. Or you could do it the way I just talked about earlier. Seven days, a lifetime of Zen practice. I don't need to meditate nearly as often as I did to remain calm and focused, but I still get benefits from meditating. I just know how to do it right because I felt what it was like because I had electrodes stuck all over my head. Yeah, it looks sort of weird, but if you want to make rapid progress and not waste time, this is the way you free up countless hours. EEG-based neurofeedback is the name for that kind of training. You can do it for less. $2,500 will get you about... 10 sessions over the course of a week of something called Brain State Technologies. Brain State Technologies isn't as advanced as the other one, but it'll give you a lot of autonomic nervous system control, as well as it can resolve some pretty amazing health problems. Unless you've done extensive therapy, or unless you lived an amazing, unusual life since you were born, you have inbuilt weaknesses psychologically that are under your conscious level. They're part of your body's self-defense mechanism. We all have them. Until you do something to blunt what they can do to you, including neurofeedback or heart rate variability training, they will be in the driver's seat some of the time and you won't be, and they will sabotage you. It's not that you're sabotaging yourself. It's that parts of your brain you are not even aware of are sabotaging yourself. So I say this is the most impactful biohack of all. 12 IQ points, seven days. It doesn't get much better than that in my experience. And finally, you can fix your sleep. I have data on my website that shows that people who sleep six and a half hours a night live longer than people who live eight hours a night, or certainly people who, live, people who sleep eight hours a night. If you sleep more than eight hours a night, your chances of dying from lots of causes go up more than someone who sleeps seven hours a night. Your need for sleep is going to be individual. It varies. It varies depending on what you eat. It varies depending on how much exercise you have, how much stress you have, how sick you are, how much recovery you need to make. I'm not saying just go out willy-nilly and sleep less. What I'm saying is that there is evidence that people who live a long time sleep less than eight hours a night, and there is not a ton of evidence based on this, this research you can see on my website that says you need eight hours a night. Sleep is critical. Efficient sleep is more critical. So I use a, a Zio on occasion. I don't do it every night. It monitors my sleep. How many times did I wake up? How much time did I spend in deep sleep? How much time did I spend dreaming? And how much time did I waste in some other kind of sleep that was a light sleep with very few physiological benefits? When I see that I had a night where I wasted my sleep, what do I do to change it? Now I've got a yardstick. And now we've got about nine minutes left, so the timing's good. This has not been in the presentation before. People talk about superfoods all the time, and honestly, they're full of crap for the most part. Kale, the new superfood. What? Bacon is a superfood. Oh. <laughs> That said, I have a prize for the person who, um, who can tell me what this is. This superfood will improve your glucose tolerance, lower your type 2 diabetes by 50%, not cause osteoporosis. People who take it live longer than those who don't. The number one source of antioxidants in your diet in the West. Doesn't decrease insulin sensitivity. 20% lower chance of prostate cancer. For women, oh, by the way, for women, 100% lower prostate cancer. <laughs> for women, less likely to be depressed or get stroke. And there's more. Produces the same mental state as doing Qigong. Improves your short-term memory. Improves your exercise performance. And makes you lose weight. All right, let's see. Um, you're cheating if you answer this one. Sorry, Jolly. All right. Based on the subway commercials, I'm going to say avocado. Avocados, that is a good guess, and it is not true. Uh, let's see. That is also a good guess, and it's actually true for some of these, but not all of them. That is also a killer guess, and it is not true for everyone up here. <laughs> Those are all superfoods in my book, though. Uh, coconut oil. Coconut oil, which is the source of MCT. Same sort of answer as the last two. 
Almost. It's coffee. not caffeine. Coffee. Who said coffee? It's coffee. This is coffee. For God's sake, drink coffee. You're crazy if you don't. Here's your bag of coffee. Now. Oh, I forgot. There's this thing called mTOR stacking. If you do the bulletproof intermittent fasting protocols that are on the website, there's the way you build muscle, and this is simplifying some things, you suppress your mTOR. And when you do that, there's three big things that will suppress it. There's fasting, like intermittent fasting or full-on fasting. Uh, and there's exercise. And there's coffee or chocolate, or to a lesser extent, green tea. So what you do is you suppress your MCT, and then when you stop suppressing it, it springs back and you build muscle. The way I actually got more ripped when I wasn't exercising was I was doing mTOR stacking. I was doing intermittent fasting in the morning, and I was having coffee with butter in it. So I had lots of calories to, to maintain muscle mass, but I didn't have any protein, so my body was doing its cellular regeneration thing called autophagy. But I was getting the caffeine benefits, sorry, the coffee benefits, because coffee does it, but caffeine doesn't do it the same way. And I was getting this other benefit. So coffee works, but there's your answer. Here's the thing about coffee. About 91.7% of green coffee has mold in it. These are referenced on my website. This is all stuff. I, I didn't make this up. That's a picture of moldy coffee. Something called biogenic amines. These are neurotransmitters like histamine forming coffee. You ever drink a cup of coffee, you feel good, and then you feel blah an hour or two later? So you drink, and you drink another cup, and you go up, down, up, down, up, down. That's not what coffee does. That's what coffee plus mold does. If you drink a clean cup of coffee, you go up, and then you gently taper off with no crash. Decaf is bad for you. Skip it. If you feel like you want the taste of coffee, drink coffee with caffeine or don't drink it at all. Caffeine is a potent antifungal that helps to protect your coffee. Here's what happens when you drink bad coffee. You get jitter and anxiety from coffee. You don't get that from good coffee. Your adrenal glands get stressed. Good coffee doesn't stress your adrenal glands nearly the same way as basically drinking poison. You get headaches from coffee. It's not the coffee most likely. There are other, other cases of that. Inflammation throughout your body. You wake up with sore joints after you have a cup of coffee. I gave up coffee for five years because of that problem. And I ended up creating upgraded coffee here by looking at every step of the coffee production process to remove all the sources of toxin formation so I could have a consistently clean cup of coffee. When I travel, I bring my own beans because when I drink Starbucks coffee or hotel coffee, I get these kinds of symptoms. I feel like crap and it hurts my performance. So I brought a bunch of coffee. It's available at a discount for you guys uh, because I figure you might want some. The other thing is if you drink coffee and it makes you pee a lot, actually it's not that caffeine itself is just a diuretic, it is. But if, if you drink the coffee and a half hour later you have to go, it's because your body is saying, for God's sake, get rid of that toxin. It's called okra toxin, and coffee is responsible for about 25% of your daily consumption of, that, of the maximum allowable government level of that toxin. Let me, let me tell you the maximum allowable level of that toxin for me, zero. Because it's potent at any amount. You don't want any of it. So minimize that. You feel better. You perform better.